hello everybody and <coughs> welcome to Culture Hub at La Mama. It's my great, great honor to be for the first time in my life in this uh, space where the rehearsals are taking place and to be sitting next to Dima Krimov and next to Tatiana. Um, I'm a huge fan, of course, of uh, Dmitry's work. And I've been exposed to it, honestly, only since he uh, came to New York uh, about two years ago. So uh, my name is Yasha Klotz, sorry, I forgot to say that. Uh, I teach at Hunter College. I do happen to teach this semester a course on Russian theater. And I should say that even in the past two years, not just this time around, it has been a totally different experience since uh, Dima has been close by. And the students have seen his work, and uh, he has done a few things at Hunter as well. And it's just not the same to teach Russian theater next to Dmitry Krimov in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it is my role, as far as I understand, to uh, lead the conversation and ask questions uh, on a sort of on a range of topic topics that um, uh, will perhaps inevitably these days touch on questions of the freedom of speech of, of course, Dmitry's career in this context, but not only. And uh, my first question or topic that I would like to bring up is perhaps too broad for us to cover in less than an hour. But nevertheless, um, what you do is, of course, completely unique, and I have a living proof of this. Students are the best proof of everything that lives, the way they react to it. And still, uh, when we talk about, <laughs> let's call it Russian culture, uh, outside of its home country, uh, we have a context of at least 100 years, but in this wide context that has lasted for more than a century, and went across so different, so many different historical milestones. We we are used to thinking first of all of literature, and much less so of theater. Maybe because theater requires a physical stage. Maybe because uh, of any other reasons. Because of just how it works. Because it of course requires a live audience, um, and well, much more, many more technical um, dimensions, right, of it. So is there anybody, perhaps, in this wide context of Russian theater outside Russia uh, in the course of a century that in any way uh, serves you as any point of reference? Because, once again, if you ask any writer if there is one predecessor, of course, there would be names would be dropping down immediately. <laughs> Russian stage directors or uh, theater makers, let's call them, in exile. No, not necessarily to America, to Western Europe, to Paris, to. Yeah. yeah. This is a problem. It's a problem. A problem, definitely. It's not to say a problem. Probably a scary problem. Because there are no examples. There are no people that I can think of. Starting this path. Не по своей воле. And not by my will. You know, I wasn't planning to do that. It's a problem. It scares. Because when, let's say. Вот сейчас when мы были в Ельском right университете, we э, и они взяли сами мастера Маргарита. Я вижу у них книжки, которые подчеркнуты в закладках. И они это понимают, хотят понять, любят. И когда говоришь бегемот, они смеются. Они, может быть, не понимают всю драму Они делают смешно, большую часть. Но все равно это их. 
but still they're trying to read it and understand. <laughs> С театром сложнее. Theater, С театром сложнее, потому что uh, это как машина. Uh, писатель должен завести you know, uh, своей энергией uh, через свою ручку или компьютер, uh, лист бумаги. А здесь нужно завести людей. Theater, И людей, говорящих на других языках. To be energized by energized by you and Это, people who speak different languages um, other than your language. Ну, я, например, плохо говорю по-английски, поэтому я завожу не своим языком, а чем-то другим. Стараюсь завести чем-то другим. Вот Таня, through somebody else. Well, sometimes Taniam, but something else rather than the language. Скажем, в Праге у меня нет Тани. И в Литве нет. И в Латвии нет. И каждый раз новая компания. Наверное, легче в одном месте. Или ты выучишь язык. Или Таня всегда будет рядом. Ну, как-то ты приучаешь к себе... Get accustomed местных, to the place, and the people who are местных here, местных. The, the, the locals, will get accustomed to the way you're Они trying думают, ну, to хорошо, uh, понятно, communicate ладно. with them. They will say, okay, fine, we understand. And if it's going to be for a long time, it won't be possible. Не American conditions of theater, they don't expect you to be in one theater for a long time. Friendly, but in practice, it's quite difficult to actually create theater поэтому, here. So, uh, I think that's why I think that nobody um, из русских людей, ну, из российских Among людей, Russian, из России, которые уехали, куда бы то ни who, было. Who Russia, no up, Я не знаю, вот говорят, uh, был такой режиссер Комиссаржевский, он был братом, по-моему, или дядей, ну, в общем, он был родственницей Веры Комиссаржевской, актрисы гениальной, великой русской actress, актрисы. Он был, он был режиссер, он работал в то время, когда она играла, и Он уехал, Давно, в начале века, 20 века, 20 и говорят, я слышал, он в Америке стал очень уважаемым и таким необходимым режиссером. Вот в России об этом не знает никто, well, просто Russia, совсем никто. Никто. Никто Комиссаржевский просто не знает, nobody. что он сделал для американского what театра, какие спектакли он ставил, я не знаю. Я не знаю. Я занимался людьми, которые you know, здесь работали на, на Ниве театра. To, uh, я не знаю. Я знаю педагогов, которые здесь работали. Но про Комиссаржевского не знаю. А он, говорят, был один из... Вот, uh, я просто не знаю. Это очень большая know. проблема. So это даже, problem, um, всегда на кого-то... Кон... Это хороший вопрос вообще. То есть не хороший вопрос. Это опасный очень вопрос. Нету. Так очень трудно не на кого опереться. Всегда лучше опереться. Знаете, Ван Гог написал хорошие картины. Вот те краски, вот те холст. Ну давай, давай так же. Набери букет цветов, поставь в горшок и, пожалуйста. Будет понятно, что Ван Гог или Ван Гог. It will be, it's very easy to understand how it works. And here in the theater, you know, there's so many converters, there's so many things that you need to overcome to get, you know, you know the language, the actors. For instance, I have great actors here right now. I'm rehearsing and always, you know, we, we manage to find good actors and we always have good actors here. And one of our actors approached me yesterday and he says, and it wasn't a very good run through yesterday. It was very, I don't know, something, I was trying to do tragedy all of a sudden, I'm watching it and it's total comedy, I don't understand what's happening. And I, I 
cannot explain to them that both <laughs> things <laughs> should be combined. <laughs> and <laughs> this actor is a very <laughs> funny <laughs> guy. He <laughs> says, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm half Hungarian, half American. So half of my brain <laughs> is Hungarian and half of my brain <laughs> is American. <laughs> and I remember in my family, <laughs> when, you would, when you're telling a joke, <laughs> my father would laugh because he's Hungarian and mom didn't understand anything. <laughs> and he told me <laughs> a joke. <laughs> and I will, I will see how many Russians <laughs> we have here. How many. The boy went to get some <laughs> bread <laughs> and he was hit by, by the tram and he lost his hand and he comes he back and mama asks him where's your hand he says well it's under the tram and she said well go back pick it up so we can go to the doctor he goes there Another one got <laughs> chopped. <laughs> so I started to laugh immediately. <laughs> <laughs> he said, my mom didn't understand this joke. <laughs> so <laughs> what can you do? What <laughs> can you do? I don't know. There are very few, right? Mm. It is very difficult to ask the next question after <coughs> a joke like this. <laughs> but thanks. Uh, redeeming Helen Shaw's uh, piece in The New Yorker, which I think came out in the spring, mm. if I'm not mistaken, which we just called off with Russian um, director in exile, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, uh, she That's makes a point yeah. about um, what what facilitates uh, your work, your theater, makes it perhaps, I'm simplifying it, but perhaps makes, makes it more accessible to uh, the English-speaking audience, uh, mainly uh, sh she speaks about the so-called theater of the artist, Theater of the Cosmos, uh, which is largely vi visual, right? It's, it's, it's not uh, so heavily based on linguistic, cultural, verbal references, but it helps it with the fact that perhaps your career also began as that of an artist and as a set designer. Uh, you have you felt kind of some kind of re reanimated role uh, of that sort once you kind of you know have this work in theater has it become more important what you did initially before you started directing? No, you know. Uh, if you're asking me what makes me believe that people will understand me, what will relate to what I'm doing, it's, it's another good question, yes, uh, because it's complicated. Only my belief in, in my... Why do you believe in something? Well, let's say in God. Do you believe in God? Let's say you believe in God, right? Let's... First of all, it's much more difficult without that belief. But also, I just believe that I believe that it doesn't matter whether you're going to laugh at that joke about chopped hands or not laughing at that joke. I, we, can, we can come up with something and offer something. Is it visual or not visual? But it's going to be humanistic. Yeah, if we're not going to be afraid of these big words, if it's going to be for humanity. We will, we will go through the shell that is, you know, for foreigners, maybe we're foreign to them, but we will break through their shell and reach them. Yeah, we can probably reach them with visual things, but anyway, I don't have any ob specific objectives that I'm going to use only visual approach to get my audience here. It's just, it's my style, it's my handwriting. It's very hard to describe your hand style, but, you know, yeah, it came out definitely from my roots of being an artist and stage designer, but I stopped painting a while ago, I don't know, um, 
I believe that it's possible to break that shell and reach the other world. If I wouldn't have that belief, I wouldn't be able I wouldn't be able to do anything. You know, the first audience that I have are my actors who are foreigners. First, their audience, they come in and they listen to what I have to say or do. I'm going to get them and to that to get them to follow me. Because if they just uh, obeying me, they need to start believing in me in order to follow me. Because ob obedience is not enough. Only, you know, my belief that in deep inside, all the people are very, very similar. And потому, that's how you can reach them. Вещи, because they're которые, basic things that are very, you know, that are humanistic, you know, that every human has them. Uh, Everybody laughs at something. Плачут. Everybody cries because of something. Боятся. Everybody is afraid of something. Everybody wants something. So, to be afraid to want and to laugh and to cry, it's almost approximately the same among everybody. You know, maybe there is some, some little другим. thing that uh, uh, makes it more understandable, that joke about chopped hands to some people than others. But the main, <laughs> the, main the majority of the humankind is похожа. very similar. No, you know, ну, I mean, you have pain, you have... Люди кричат от боли people во всех странах scream because they're in pain, and they scream the same in any country if they're in pain. Одинаково. Exactly the same. И хотят э, любви. And they probably all want love. И воспоминания. And memories, memories. Rehearsing a show. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't know what this actress is going to do, but I don't know her memories. I'm giving her an example of my memories, and I look into her eyes, and I can see in her eyes that probably her memories are strong. I understand that she's trying to transform into her own memories in order to be able to do it, but it's amazing. I, I remember her eyes now. So those are obvious things that unite everybody, and that's how you get to the audience. So if we're going to speak seriously, you know, God created a human and then split them into different regions and then created ethnicities. So and one, you know, God created one thing and then it got split up. Because he wanted to punish humans, he decided to divide them into different ethnicities and nationalities. So there is only one hope that we'll be able to break that shell and to find that similarity in everybody in the world. Because the the feelings sh are pretty much the same if you go deep inside. Thank you. That's really inspiring, of course, because the theater is, in a sense, restoring that which yeah, God yeah, used it to is punish. Totally right, yeah. <laughs> uh, and nevertheless, it is mm -hmm. not to um, maybe excluding the Cherry Orchard, but the Wilma Theater, which I know mm -hmm. was too much even for you probably to even speak about it as a as a as a regular kind of speaker so on the drum. Uh, the next thing that everyone uh, saw here uh, on this stage at La Mama uh, was Anegin. Anegin in our own world, a very idiosyncratic adaptation of course of Pushkin's original novel in verse which is not known to be the most, let's say, accessible uh, text of Russian classics, which you nevertheless chose to experiment upon in the way that you did, including kind of glossing, annotating, commenting on such arguably, uh, not, not necessarily universal phenomena as Russian steam. <laughs> Or uh, which is explained as, I'm quoting uh, Dmitry, it's very much like American blues, but no, it's worse because it's Russian blues. And this is what makes it Russian blues. 
<laughs> so, uh, could you talk a little bit more just about ha how how conscious was that uh, choice of this work, of this production, uh, as your first, let's say, entry onto this page? And uh, entry for, I guess, before uh, the American audience, also with actors who are mostly American. Uh, no, this is not a good oh, question. I don't know. <laughs> who knows? No, it's a very simple show. You know, it's a rather simple show. Four people show. appear and talk to the audience. <laughs> you know. No, no real set. Very simple. I saw that for the, the first try, <laughs> you know, we will collect <laughs> enough money to have four actors on stage. That would be this easy thing. Uh, Especially one girl, uh, I, I knew one girl from, Ye from Yale, the actress, and I always thought that maybe I'll be able to work with her even when she was a student at Yale. So and she agreed to do it. And the rest was just a question of technique, you know, how you put it all together. But in reality, как бы это то, что мы и делаем, ну как вот четыре человека объясняют объясняют американцам, а я надеялся, что все-таки придут американцы, не только русские, им глупо объяснять про Евгения Негина. Хотя тоже не глупо, но это 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 глупо. But uh, the whole basis for the show, we're trying to explain to Americans in the foreign country how beautiful it used to be in our country. You know, my students at Gitis, I used uh, I, I, I was touching on some questions about Soviet Union, about so some things that used to be in the Soviet Union because they were young. My Russian students didn't understand how it was in the Soviet Union. They had no clue. And right now, you know, explaining to Americans about spleen or about some other things. You know, it's a despair, you know. We have Pushkin, who is, who is impossible to translate. For some, for some reason, nobody can translate. Dostoevsky is well known. Pushkin is not well known at all. My son once tried to explain to me why. He, he told me that, you know, every country brings very specific cultural spe specificity of that country. For instance, tulips are well, from they, Holland. They're, they're somewhere well, else, probably, they grow. But we know that yeah. tulips are from Holland, are the best. For many years, everybody uh, thought ballet from вот Russia, Bolshoi Theater. So so Russia needs uh, to, to bring Dostoyevsky. the darkness into culture. <laughs> and that's Dostoevsky. Why do you need нужно. Pushkin? Pushkin is light. You don't need Pushkin. From Russian <laughs> culture. Я недавно какую-то фразу, у меня даже записано в дневнике. По-моему, I think it was Prishvin, Prishvin, the Russian uh, Russian writer who has wonderful diaries. Mostly he wrote about nature. And the phrase is like this. The cow is very understandable. The horse is very understandable. A uh, human being, а understandable. But what is a squirrel? Squirrel is something extra. Вот Пушкин в этой палитре, когда все распределено, когда тюльпаны должны быть в Голландии, Пушкин лишнее в русской культуре, несмотря на то, что от него все и пошло. Потому что он позитивный человек. Позитивный русский — it's an oxymoron. You know, those are the tulips that are growing somewhere, you know, in Australia. Probably you can grow tulips in Australia. But, you know, from Australia you need kangaroo, not tulips. You know, Australian tulips doesn't make any sense. How can you explain to Americans <laughs> that Pushkin is lovely, that he is light, that he is amazing, that he is the highest, lightest writer? 
только что можно объяснять детям. You know, the only hope is that you can explain it to children who don't детям, know anything. Так, если что-то Because такое интересное, if, они откроют if they рот, interested uh, in something, they will just open their mouth and they will listen and they have no knowledge of и what was previously. Вот ним, and so that is the path that we need to find for the children, the explanation. В общем, как бы объяснить себя, презент... you know, если так про себя говорить, it, что ну, то есть us, мы объясняли us, не только Пушкина, we were not only trying to но они, Pushkin. мы объясняли меня. We were trying to explain myself. Вот э, мой язык, you know, my наш, наш язык, our наш, language, наш язык. Yeah? мы презентовали we это меню, to that <laughs> menu. Mm. под видом спектакля для детей. As if it was the show that we were showing. Ну что мы yeah. будем взрослым говорить? What are we going to Какой tell to the adult? ну, Adults ладно, are not going to listen to our language. They have Hollywood. They have wonderful actors. Everybody lives много. much better than we Какой used to live. Ну, What language can we introduce? But we can talk to your children. Ну, you can bring your children да. and listen to what we're saying. So it was sort of uh, it was a tricky show because it was for children, but we didn't mind if the Здесь adults were present. Объявить, э, so спектакль, you know, it's very hard to announce that you're going to have children's Здесь show, but it will start at 7 p.m. Полочкам, uh, because here everything is sort of Sorted out differently. In Moscow, we had Eugene Onegin many uh, years ago at this show. It was a children's show. Считали, and, we were, придет, and we were happy if, if four, people, four children, children а were present in the show. We'll be absolutely happy and the adults will listen to what we're going to tell the children. We were sort of pretending to be fools. We will talk to your children, but you can be present. But we're just talking to your children. Well, you don't know what to do with them, so you brought them to the theater. We're talking to them. You can be present, and maybe you know you want to listen to what we have to say. But that was not only presentation of Pushkin and Eugene Onegin, but also the language. We were sort of masking, you know, spleen, Pushkin's spleen, and Russian spleen. We were pretending to tell you, you know, we're strange people trying to show something. If you like this, we might do something else later on. So that was a little bit light, sort of. But in some ways it was essentially necessary because we needed to say hello to the new audience. And that was sort of it. So Pushkin really helped us. Of um, um, of someone else uh, from about 50 years ago by now uh, of Senyavsky, who shocked uh, the entire kind of community of his fellow Russian emigrants in the 70s, uh, very consciously so of course uh, with his book Trolls with Pushkin Pragulki Pushkinov. Uh, when it was published, it created an uproar because how dare you, Senyavsky, to speak of Pushkin uh, in such a in such a casual, not to say absolutely kind of obnoxious way, as if Pushkin runs around on very thin legs. Uh, instead of standing firmly on the pedestal where he was put, of course, by um, the toilet. Yeah, uh, where he was put to, to Soviet century and stayed there thereafter, right? So uh, Pushkin is, of course, can be very different. Uh, <laughs> someone uh, whom you enact in Anegin in our own world, whom Sinyavsky writes about, which is not the same, but also kind of more on that side. And Pushkin, the official Nasha Sio, or our everything. Um, was Sinyavsky's book in any way in your mind, on your mind, when you were choosing um, Anegin for your first performance? You know, I'm happy to say that I was friends with Sinyavsky. If I can say that, and yeah, I'm being obnoxious, but he was older, and... Uh, But он и его жена Мария Васильевна относились к нам вот с моей женой и ну просто в высшей степени по семейному. 
family. И мы им платили те, тем же. And we loved them and мы we жили у них they were, you know, много we, раз. We, we и они у нас house, жили, house, когда house, приезжали в Россию. Moscow, и я us. студентам, uh, как говорится, плеш проел про эту книгу. And, you know, I spent a lot of time reading that book when I was a student. Uh, и, конечно, они... Uh, ну, как сказать? Ну, конечно, course, она в голове. Вот, вот вы спрашиваете, на кого из режиссеров я могу опереться? Не знаю. Я могу опереться на Синявского, делая этот произвел великое просто дело, великое дело. Во-первых, он написал эту книгу в лагере. Это если вы не знаете, я вам скажу. Можно вообще, там же нельзя было писать книгу, но можно было писать письма жене. Он писал письма жене. Дорогая Маша, я вот тут подумал, а дальше он писал главу из книги. Она знала chapter, эту хитрость, она получала это письмо, отрезала, дорогая Маша, и вклеивала эту Маша, книгу. Так он написал эту книгу. And that's how he wrote the book while he was still in camp. It was, he was an amazing hooligan, as we ну, used to uh, say. Том, you know, of course, he uh, printed his, uh, his uh, you know, and uh, uh, you know, Abraham Terz was his pseudonym, and he was writing. And he was, they were both adventurous people. And so, and Pushkin was exactly like them, you know. If you read a lot of things about Pushkin, he was a real hooligan. He was adventurous. He was audacious, you know. He was a real hooligan. He was really adventurous. You know, he had this nail that was very, very long. You know, he had, he had uh, pants that were see-through and he didn't wear underpants. He was always shocking people. He was fond of shocking people. Жены всех, And no, not, он, not to mention that the wives of everybody. In, well, I don't want to talk about that. He was really, he was really very adventurous, uh, to say the least. Uh, and somehow Sinyavsky discovered that in him, that they were companions in some way. In, his first ed, in the first edition that Mari Vasilina published in Syntaxis in Paris, the, uh, the cover was uh, designed by... What's his name? My love in Шемякин. Шемякин did the uh, cover. Колючая проволока. So there was the um, колючая проволока. Uh, barbed no, wire. The fence in and concentration camp. No, barbed wire. И Синявский гуляет по дружке с Пушкиным, а Синявский с бородой, а Пушкин в цилиндре. Они гуляют по этой зоне. And Pushkin has a cylinder, and they're walking <laughs> around, and it's barbed wire around them, and they are <laughs> taking a walk. Свободы, and this amazing свободы, spirit of freedom, freedom that you can что see, because the свободная. country, Absolutely. when Pushkin Может, was alive, хуже. was exactly the same, or even worse, than it was when Sinevsky was alive. Теплили, they just, you know, we couldn't compare. They <laughs> couldn't Всегда. compare. Ivan but but Ivan, Elizaveta, Elizaveta Ivan the Terrible, then Elizabeth, Pavla, then and the Paul, and, and, and everybody was scary. One monster after another. Pushkin so Pushkin was the first dissident. And it was, you know, Sinevsky was dissident from 1970. And this was So sort of he took off his Это head to the dissident who was the dissident in the 19th century, the first one, who, you know, they fought the system uh, with their humor and with their adventurous tricks and with be being not like everybody else. Ведь эти слова Синявского when на суде says, вообще, when ну he, просто, я не знаю, это можно девизом. Hearing, человек, который сделал person, абсолютно уголовное преступление criminal, против советской you know, власти. Union, Он на суде сказал, что после этих hearing, у меня с советской words, властью расхождение чисто эстетическое. I do not agree with the aesthetics of the Soviet Union. I am ready to cry when I say these words because I understand what he means by that. 
It means that русские вот эти вот бюрократические лица, которые похожи на, я не буду говорить на что похожи, похожи, эстетика другая, она культивирована в другой системе. Даже не эстетики, это не эстетика, она, ну просто когда Uh, всех убивают, убивают, When you, убивают, убивают. You keep killing а all the только, best people and you, you uh, left with whatever is at the bottom, the worst examples of your, лица, of your country, лица. faces, they change. И все, и and поведение, everything changes, and behavior глаза. changes, and the eyes change. Uh, Поэтому, so, ну, конечно, конечно Синявский, это просто, Синявский в этом смысле, это просто and, yes. uh, потрясающий, смелый человек, Brave смелый, and благородный, noble person, uh, and какого-то высочайшего уровня. Of, я, мы даже, you know, извините, вы спросили про Синявского, uh, я, не about Синявский, Вообще, then, я небольшой читатель. You know, I'm not a ну, great reader. Well, at least later, uh, early in my life. Um, ну, мы с ним познакомились. But, you know, я примерно знал, we кто were это. Примерно. I approximately knew who he was. Мы, я поехал uh, встречать его uh, на, в аэропорт, когда он приехал, I, когда умер I went, Даниэль. Uh, when Daniel died, его, I went его, to the airport uh, to pick up Sinyaski. Daniel was his, his uh, partner, and he was partner in crime. They, they actually got seven and eight years in, in, in ну, camps. Стари, ну, старичок, ну, so I went to pick him up at the airport. Бы, this old man comes out. Oh, seems to be nice. I, didn't, I had no relation to him. And so we, we went to visit them. They, and then, at one point, unfortunately to my shame, I opened his book. Помню, I don't even remember what book I opened. Подумал, and I said, oh my God, idiot, I am an Это idiot and a pastor. This is, he's a really, uh, he is a wonderful писатель. writer. He's an Рядом amazing writer. He was sitting Andrei next Donat, to me. And I'm Andrei Donatich, why don't you have a little bit of wine? I'm sitting to a genius. He is an amazing writer. He is a Russian classical writer. I love the way he writes. So it's a long story. But yeah, yeah. Another thing I want to ask, of course, is how you feel, how it feels to be directing here in New York on this continent and uh, be doing other work in Latvia and Lithuania in Europe. Uh, of course, these are different productions. Um, if you could speak a little bit about mm, just about how it feels to be sort of between simply geographically uh, in the Baltic space between where you used to be and where you are now here in New York. How does this uh, cultural, geographical, perhaps even linguistic and cultural thing, um, differences in the or relationship geographical between these three worlds that you have inhabited? How how does it work? What you do and what you see, uh, and in the audiences that come and how they react to it? Uh, тоже хороший вопрос, потому что тоже сложно. Потому что есть какие-то технические вещи, которые мне менее интересны. Но их надо учитывать. Ну, например, вот я сейчас поставил в Риге, в Латвии, Питер Пен. И, ну, это моя версия. Там... Есть две сцены, э, дуэль scenes, Пушкина, Пушкин's дуэл, трагическая и комическая. Comic, ну, там Питер Пен девочки показывают, что такое театр, что такое театр, ты не знаешь, что такое театр. Ну, вот сейчас я покажу, что такое театр. Ну, you какие-то примеры. И во многом это работы моих студентов, And которые мы вместе делали, и сейчас они вошли в спектакль. И была замечательная работа одной девочки, вот wonderful, creative, трагическая дуэль. You know, а потом, а потом моя идея старая, не пошедшего спектакля, ком комическая дуэль. Ну, в общем, дуэл. Э, надо девочке показать, что so все, все можно вообще в театре. Но 
Вот Пушкин на сцене национального Пушкин театра. Of National of, uh, Здесь это даже Riga. непонятно. Слава Богу. Clear, это криминально. Criminal right это просто криминально. Мне в статьях написано, кроме, кроме похвалы, там, но, что show, мы не хотим We don't want to Мы не хотим знать этого свадебного генерала, general, которого нас заставляло учить это, э, 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 это, это империали, империалистическая this, система. System, Мы это презираем, мы самостоятельные, мы знать этого не хотим. Еще когда начинают Russian. читать по-русски, потому что переводим хуже ну, наверное, тем более на латышке. Как-то это язык know, другой совсем, структуры. Latvian, totally мы пробовали, probably. но это... Latvian, Даже актер, он очень Even долго actors, учил, как это нужно произносить. Я уже ставил ему вообще крупных русских актеров, которые читают amazing хорошее. Russian actors to listen to the way they read the poem and all и, that. Uh, такой, It's just вообще, the, the хорошо, rhyme. Больше, быть, you know, if you're reading Pushkin and the rhyme is so beautiful, you don't need to listen to anything else. Well, I didn't think that I was creating a revolution on stage. Ну, неважно, But, общем, so дела. they have their own <laughs> problems and their own business <laughs> there in Latvia. <laughs> and here in the United States, they have their own <laughs> problems. <laughs> and in Czech Republic, where <laughs> I'm going to direct They have their own Здесь problems. скажешь э, э, 1968 год, никто ухом не подойдет. Here, а в, в, в Праге скажешь, э, все вздрогнут. Есть такие точки, которые you know, иногда их вообще point. лучше не касаться. Sometimes Просто лучше не касаться, потому что ты не выберешь ноги оттуда. Ты не успеешь You will drown, you will а иногда be sucked это и стыдно, потому что And это не твои проблемы. Uh, и ты как бы шутишь по поводу своих болезненных точек. И это не очень удобно. Очень много таких внешних also, uh, опасностей, uh, капканов которые you know, надо, надо знать сознательно, you или ты попадаешь в Either you're going to, I want to get into that trap, but then you need to be ready that it's going to be painful. It's possible to do that, but you need to be prepared for that. I'm curious about the other side of your question. Yes, really, you have the audience, you have interest, you some People know something, and you're должен, trying to understand what is this audience about. Вот you need to feel я, it. Uh, своим, My students, uh, говорил, I was talking образ, to them. Как бы. We have this image that uh, we usually discuss. Москве, you know, зависит, we're вот in Moscow. We're working in Moscow. It's a Moscow образ. image. Uh, то есть это образ не только московский, но Not он, only Moscow, он but it's sort of It's built on Moscow electricity, uh, if you will. Я говорю, вы вот знаете, есть you know, вилка, как, вот, когда you have this, включаете, you know, when you plug in the lamp, да? yeah. Есть более сложные, когда три. Sometimes you have three and sometimes you have. А есть такие приборы. And sometimes you have this gadget. Много. When you have a lot. Вот пять или семь. Five or seven. Это очень сложные приборы. It's a very complicated gadget. И так ты их не воткнешь, их надо на найти правильную позицию, чтобы воткнуть. You need to find the right воткнуть. position to get them all in. Вот это вы. So это мы. that's you. Мы должны... We need to... Uh, что было? What? Какой интерес сейчас? What что, was? Что вчера делалось в театре? What did you do yesterday in the theater? Где вам кажется пик What's интереса? What's interesting? What's at the most? Кто приезжал на гастроли? Who was on uh, tour? Yesterday, is Chekhov boring? Is it up? Is everybody fed up with it, or maybe not? So all these seven things that you need to plug in, you need to feel and get it in. And then that computer will work. But it depends on you and how you're going to feel it and how many those little things you need to know. How do you feel it? 
but it's difficult to do in Moscow while you're in Moscow and you're a native and you know I never thought about what am I going to do next. It was very natural. I was just going to do another show. But here I don't know. In Israel, for instance, Уже uh, давно предложение в Израиле. You know, I had a, a couple of suggestions what, you know, from Israel. Я одно предлагаю. I'm suggesting one thing. очень хорошее. And I, I thought that I was suggesting something very exciting and good. Вот Питер Пен, я думал, там. I was trying to do Peter Pan there. Не, у нас не And they said, no, they would not understand that. That's not for Israel. And like, that's so silly, that's stupid. How can you not understand? How can you tell me this? Not for Israel. Not for our country. If, if it's a good no. show, why isn't it for your country? But I am a guest there. So something else. And I don't understand what is necessary for that country, what is essential, what would нужно. be interesting. Это очень трудно иногда it's понять. Еще со всеми этими преходящими обстоятельствами, типа войн, you know, uh, uh, it's very hard to identify. Sometimes uh, one of my friends, very experienced and uh, very close friend of mine, he said, why are you doing Russian classic, Russian classic? Take Greek. Greek. You know, it's a sure thing. Верняк, it's a sure thing. You know, Господи, take Odysseus. Все, Minotaur, you, you know, Minotaur, Helena, you know, Господи, Helena. I mean, you can do anything. Камень, там, uh, you know, Sisyphus. Sisyph. I mean, you can do anything you ну, want with the Greeks. Everything is clear and Это no confrontation. <laughs> it happened Greece many years ago. Greeks are great. We don't have, you know, not one Greek will be upset <laughs> with it. It's ancient <laughs> Greece. <laughs> they have other problems now. They're not going to get upset. They gave it to the world. The world, you know, you know they, they cut the umbilical cord from Greece. You know, the ancient Greece is way back there. Anybody can do it. It's property of the world. It's practically Shakespeare, but ten times more. Because Shakespeare is already, it belongs to the world. But, you know, the Brits, they can get upset. You know, if, you know, you can do sacrilege with the Greeks, <laughs> nobody will get upset. I think, I've never done it, but I think. But the Brits can still take it, they can get upset. Uh, but when you take something that is closer, you start thinking, how is it going to affect? Who is going to take it personally? Who is going to get upset? Why will... Somebody will get offended, or maybe you will you will inspire them and drive them to something. But for instance, we saw a show about five years ago. Brooklyn Mosque, Miller. At Miller's Bridge. Yeah, five years ago. 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 Five Suits, but you know, on the floor is sand, and then you have the rain of the blood, and everybody is like this. And this is the text from 1940s, and it's about the people who are basically, you know, it's a depression. Those people who lived during the era of American depression in 1930s, right? And, and they, he brings them up to basically be Greek characters. He talks, he talks to Americans. He says, guys, you have ancient roots. From, you're related to ancient Greeks. 
You are not, you know, it's not those poor people under the bridge. They're philosophers from Greece. And the passions were like from Greek tragedies. You know, it's, it's related to Agamemnon and Odysseus and everybody. What, what was it in Greek? Hippolytus, that's what you had under the bridge there. And the Americans take it not only as a good theater, it, he is a good director, but as that message to them, they, they all of a sudden feel that they're proud of themselves. This is us, you know, we are the ancient Greeks and us, we're like this, we belong there. You know, this is the nation that is only 300 years, but we are ancient Greeks. And I felt today that I was an ancient Greek today. And, you know, you talk to your wife and you say, I am an ancient Greek. Look, I was absolutely right. Look, he came from, uh, from Holland and he tells us that we're ancient Greeks. I always felt like an ancient Greek. Это манипуляция so в хорошем смысле слова. Meaning, uh, то есть манипуляция word. должна быть обязательно. Ты манипулируешь uh, своим знанием, своим чувствованием uh, вот местного You know, местного, местного состояния, you know, something uh, that the uh, locals feel, ума, but you души. want to manipulate them and bring them to a level. And it's very scary to make a mistake if you можно, going to do that. Uh, можно, uh, because you, вот can, <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can wind up being a spam <laughs> and just, you <laughs> know, просто, they will ну, just uh, automatically uh, put in the garbage bin and that's it. Uh, So it's very complicated. I don't remember what you asked, but... <laughs> but it was a good question anyway. Uh. Whatever the question was, uh, I'm glad you heard it. <laughs> Thank you. Do we also have questions from the public? <laughs> Two more hours and we'll be free to go, right? Uh, Should we have time uh, for at least one for like question? One or two yeah, questions. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. If there are any, uh, we can simply take them. That's exactly what we should go to the top of the middle fence because in the hotel we have Well, there's a huge difference. You know, at home I was. No, как-то не думая о том, для кого делать. I wasn't thinking who is going to see it. I was just creating shows at home. Как хозяйка готовит для семьи. You know, I was like, you know, when you were at home and you're making dinner for your family. I'm making pelmeni or cutlets. I know that my family loves it, and I know that they'll come home and they'll eat it. So. It was a, I was absolutely Boil. calm. I was absolutely calm when I was directing there and opening the show. And here, of course, uh, immediately you turn on this, you know, this algorithm that is in your head now that you have to calculate. Some t I will repeat myself saying you don't have to pay attention to that and you can do whatever Но you want. But, you know, but it's the same as I'm crossing the street and I don't care that the cars are actually passing by. They can hit me. I, I have the right not to pay attention to the cars that are actually on the street. But they can actually hit me at one point, right? Because I'm not paying attention. But on the other hand, to wait for the green light like an idiot when it's an empty street, I don't want to do it, right? Because that's silly. So you need to, to decide for yourself. That car is far away. I have enough time to run, right? And it's raining. I'm going to run. It's a huge, huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Question about New York. Hmm? 
does New York inspire you to create Конечно. something on stage? Да, у меня есть uh, два, два, два замысла, по крайней мере. I have at least Проблема в том, что я могу сделать один спектакль в год. You know, here the problem is that I can do one show a year, well, maybe maximum no, two, and that's practically impossible. No, uh, ну, просто еще тут надо же как-то деньги зарабатывать. You know, here you need to make money somehow and raise the money. You know, theater doesn't make money here, it turns out. And so I have to direct Peter Pan and Riga, so come back and try to do something here. So one show a year, and we just started. I don't have enough time to, like I'm thinking, now we're going to do this show that we're working on, and then I have this thing about New York. I have an idea about New York. You know, I don't, I'm sorry, some of you probably know. My son and I were, my son is much more advanced in computer science. And we were talking about AI. And, and he, has, he has, in his phone, there is an AI in his phone. And he said, wait. He pushed the button, uh, and, and he asked the AI, he says, tell me, tell me, do you speak Russian? And some mm -hmm. female voice says, yes, I do speak Russian. Uh, and so he gives me the phone, ask her something. And I ask her, please tell me, what show should I direct in New York so I'll be very successful? Tiny little pause. And she says, you know, New York, New York people love, New York people love when you tell them about them. If you are foreigner, it will be very interested to the audience in New York to see you. And she starts, she starts to tell me amazing, clever things. I'm looking at my son and I'm saying, this is absolutely correct. And he says, 5% belong to me when you do it. Я подумал, что действительно здорово рассказать именно глазами потому что я не знаю глубоко, и у меня не хватит жизни, чтобы не хватает эмоциональной жизни, чтобы потому что даже Бродский, знаете, я прочитал книжку, вот он писал по-английски и гордился очень Я тут наскочил на воспоминания его друга, она была американка. Она скептически прочитала английский, и он очень верил, когда она или кто-то другой пытались его поправить was all the Americans who were trying. So it's impossible unless you were born, I, you know, I don't know, maybe Nabokov who spoke English from the time he was two or three years old. Uh, it's impossible. Of course New York inspires me, yes. You know, people who, who walk by, you know, you can just sit on the bench and watch them and that's the whole show. Yeah. But I think it's the, the eyes of the foreigner. You can even dig deeply, but it has to be the foreigner. You know, one of the best uh, books that were written about Russia, uh, we were uh, it was semi-forbidden in Russia. Marquis de Custy. I remember he was, I didn't read it, he said, Russia is a bad country. When you ride from Russia abroad, all the Russians who are traveling with you, they're laughing. When you go back to Russia, all the Russians who are riding back, they're all very sad and don't want to talk to anybody. That's a possibility to do something like this. You know, clear eyes to see something, something interesting. Yeah. Another question. Um, something for the Russian audience to direct something here. 
is it interesting? Is it possible? It's not that it's not interesting. I don't have that much time or strength. I cannot do everything that is interesting for me. In Riga right now, I am actually doing a show with Chulpan Hamada, all the Russians and another actor who is Maxim Suhanov, no, they're wonderful Moscow actors. You know, in uh, Moscow we didn't have time to connect and do something. But I would do it not only in Russian, Russian Chinese, they're amazing actors. Yeah, they're amazing uh, artists. And here, I'm, I'm very happy when the Russian or Russians come to our shows and the Russian audience is great. It's mine, <laughs> you know, it's no, I understand, but I would like, uh, what is the challenge uh, here? You know, to get the connection, to see, I want to see the language that I have and my feelings and my pains and my aesthetics and my understanding what is beautiful, what is not, and uh, the movement that I appreciate on stage. Is it possible to break the shell of people who are in totally different culture? For whom Mark Twain, we love Mark Twain and know about the United States. I was doing the show in, in, you know, in the American show, where two stories by Hemingway and two scenes from Eugene O'Neill from Desire Under the Elm. Uh, it's, 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 an Ameri it's not American Just literature. A lot of people don't know who they are, and Другое. it's not very popular among Americans. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> возможности надо искать. You know, you need to find opportunities. Right now we don't have we don't have a suggestion from somebody. Let's do it in Russian. Таких то вот кандидатов. Yes, let's let's do it. I вот в Линкольн центре. Let's do it at Lincoln Center. It's going to be in Russian for the Russian. Я пошел бы, потому что мне мне казалось бы, что Линкольн центр хорошее место. Lincoln Center would be a great not only prestige, but American would come to see the Russian culture. That's the whole mission. I would love to do no, that, предлагают, конечно, but nobody is offering me that. Другая, yeah. другая they have another program. <laughs> yeah. no, да, well, <laughs> we will try to do something. I wish I could tell you. What's the difference between theatrical society in the United States and Russia? Are you being welcomed here? You know, unfortunately, I don't know anything about institutions. I don't know them in Russian. I don't know them here. Actors who, who are working здесь, with me, and I've chosen my uh, actors here. They're very, they're very interested, and in, they're interested uh, in our process. Well, some people cannot. Who, I don't know. Some, some of them, I, I could never figure out the actors in the societies, uh, theatrical society in Russia. I don't want to think about it. I want to have five people who are in the same boat with me and we will row. And we're going to a very specific island that we all want to reach. And we have, and we will have, you know, we have to dig at that island. And I believe that the, the treasures are buried on that island and we have to come back. We have to go to that island and we want to find those treasures on that island and actually take the boat back. Because on that island, you only have treasures, but nothing is there. We need to bring the treasures back. So there are too many problems for me to, to think about some in, uh, institutions and uh, societies that are here. I think everything is very similar. I don't think, I think theatrical societies are very similar everywhere. 